This is Twit. I am so excited to get uh, astrobiologist Jen Eigenbrod on the line. She is with NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, where they made an amazing discovery this week. Jen, welcome to the new screensaver. It's great to have you on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Did you? I have to ask though. Astro, okay, space, mm -hmm. biology. Until now, that really didn't mean a lot. You mean until the other day? Yeah, I mean, we, going, yo, what, okay, well, um, I mean, there's no biology on the moon. There's no bio. We didn't know about biology out there. Is there or is there? Is this not? Is this not something new? We don't know. We don't know. We really don't know. Yeah. Uh, there could be life on other planets. Uh, we could be life beyond our solar system. Yeah, but could be those is are, a big. Those are big questions. A big could be, right? And I know we're interested. It is. We want to well, here, find it. Here's, here's the interesting thing. Uh, when I first got into astrobiology, I think most graduate students at that time would have said, uh, no, there's probably not life out there. And then within a few years of being in graduate school, I remember asking a class of about 200 undergraduates what they thought about life elsewhere in the solar system. And every single one of them thought that we probably had life elsewhere. And so the, our perception of life elsewhere has changed dramatically over only a few years. I mean, this is 20 years ago. Right. But, um, but we haven't had a lot of evidence until recently. It feels like it's been the last 20 years that there's been this sort of drumbeat of evidence of water on Mars and of potential signs that there might have been life on Mars. Um, is That's it fair correct. to say this is sort of the latest and maybe the biggest little signal that we've gotten about the possibility? I think every little bit counts as something significant because if we didn't have all of those other bits, we probably wouldn't have done it in the first place. So we did the follow the water um, we, we found out some evidence with the first uh, rovers that the Pathfinder found some stuff. And then, of course, Curiosity really expanded upon that when it discovered there had been lakes in the Gale Crater around three and a half billion years ago. That's a pretty significant discovery because it tells us that uh, there was sustained water uh, at the surface during that time period. What's crazy about that is that that lake could have been around for hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of years. That's a long time. And it's such a sharp contrast to what we have today on that dusty red planet. It's, it seems bone dry, yeah. except for a few seeps of water coming out of the ground in places. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah the, so there's Gale Crater. Is the idea that by finding organic material in the crater, is the idea that that's a, maybe potentially a lake bottom that might've had some stuff that drifted down there? Yeah, so imagine um, having stuff coming in by rivers. We also have uh, lakes, I'm um, sorry, we have um, windblown material coming in. And perhaps in the water, life was living. Wow. And we don't know if that was the case or not, but we have discovered all of the essential ingredients to support life there. So Even if life wasn't there, it you know it, our concept of it is that it could have been happy being there. It We're doesn't mean that it was. Yeah. So what what you know, was what did you find this week? We found organic matter in the rocks. Okay. So those same exact rocks that we just talked about, you know, coming in from river, like all those sediments coming in from rivers or windblown stuff or stuff in the lake, all of it gets deposited at the bottom of the lake. And those become the rocks that uh, get buried at depth for a while. And then three, some three and a half billion years later, uh, they've been excavated by erosion. And lo and behold, here comes Curiosity Rover and drills into one of those. Wow. And the Curiosity Rover drilled in and uh, we took that sample and we heated it up and produce gases. And then we analyzed those gases. And what we discovered was a set of molecules that were coming off the sample at high temperature. And it was a diversity of molecules, more than what we had ever detected on Mars before. And But because they were coming up at high temperature, they tell us that they're actually coming from something much bigger inside the sediment, something like a gigantic, what we call a macro molecule. So imagine having, there you go, we, we heat up the sample, there go the gases, they go into our instrument. We call this instrument SAM, it's the uh, sample analysis at Mars. The gases get ionized by an electron stream 
and then they off they go, they, they hear the molecules, they turn into fragments and then our detector actually tells us the mass of those fragments. And from that, we can tell what the original gas was. And but well, because we see different chemicals in this gas at high temperatures, it tells us we have these large molecules in the sample itself. And those large molecules are more consistent with what we expect of almost every natural sample that we have ever come across. So you can think of um, here, you got small, these are the small compounds. That's the really big one there, the carrageen type pump compound. So the carrageen is broken down into propane, sulfur, benzene, That's that kind of right. thing. Okay. That's right. So the SAM instrument is only detecting the little bits and pieces that are plucked right. off of that larger molecule. Was, this, was SAM designed to do specifically this? Yes. So you almost expected to find this. We were hopeful for a long time. <laughs> it, it was uh, three years. Wow. Let's see, it was, uh, yeah, about three years into the mission when we came across the sample that, that gave us the information that and, we needed. And to all, really this, all this time, Curiosity has been drilling holes, getting samples, putting them in SAM, and nothing. Well, I wouldn't say nothing. We've, we've learned quite a bit about the rocks and about what that lake was like. But no but organic we, uh, chemicals. Well, we did have we did identify some organic molecules earlier in the mission, but um, there was only a few of them, and they were kind of odd in their chemistry, and we uh. weren't quite sure what to make of those. This time around, the molecules fit what we expected. Interesting. If you were to take um, an ancient lake sediment from Earth and analyze it the same thing as Sam, you'd see something similar. Interesting. If you were to look at meteorites, for instance, that have lots of organic matter in them, you'd see something similar. Uh, and then we, we even analyze a Martian meteorite that has organic material in it that we think is coming from geological processes only, a very non-biological form that's unusual for Earth, but perhaps more common on Mars. And we even saw the same types of signals. And so it's great that what we saw on Mars is consistent with natural samples but at the same time, we can't tell what the source of it is because it matches all three possibilities. Right. So it could be, in fact, a meteor deposited it there. It could be. In fact, there are these tiny little dust particles we call interplanetary dust particles that are essentially raining down uh. onto the surface of Mars all the time. We have them raining down on Earth too, but we just don't notice them as much. But on Mars, uh, they're raining down all the time. They probably have for the history of the planet. And those could accumulate over time, especially in something like a giant giant lake in a crater um, that's been around for uh, hundreds of thousands of millions of years. Now, there was also a discovery about methane and seasonality. What does that tell us? Yeah, so methane is a modern chemical in the atmosphere of Mars. And uh, there's been various folks who have been trying to make measurements of it from different techniques. And SAM is part of um, the, it's is sitting in the rover body in the belly, and it actually sniffs the atmosphere of Mars. Well, this is one of the uh, nominal experiments that we do on Mars on a re regular cadence. There you go, there's the SAM, the inlet. and what we do is uh, we've been doing this, I don't know, maybe a couple times a year. And we started to realize that, hey, the value that we're getting from methane is changing. It's seasonal. It took, it took three Mars years. Right. Look That's actually that. six Earth years. Wow. And we actually started realizing, hey, there's a seasonal cycle here. So the amount of uh, methane goes up during the summer and then by winter it's kind of falling down and, and dropping to a low point. And uh, why is this? Well, we honestly don't know. We don't know what the source of the methane is, but we can speculate about it using models and stuff to try and understand a little bit more uh, where it might be coming from. Uh, now what's kind of uh, serendipitous is that we also are reporting this organic material in the rocks. And so one of the ideas is that organic material in rocks in general at depth is going through processes in the subsurface. And eventually that makes its way to the atmosphere. And perhaps uh -huh. there's something on a seasonal basis that's regulating how much gets released into the atmosphere. We just don't know those particulars yet. 
But um, there are lots of ideas floating around already, and I'm sure that uh, after the announcement yesterday, there will be a lot more people coming up with ideas to help explain it. <laughs> when you got the first data back with these uh, organic compounds, how is it exciting, or is it like, does it take a while to sink in, or what, is the, what does it look like? Oh, I think we need to back up a moment. Um, the uh, data comes down from Sam, and then we go through a process of trying to understand what that is. And uh, we received the data probably back in uh, or late winter, 2015. Whoa! Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not overnight. <laughs> Scientists yeah, are patient. About, it took me about six months to go through uh, initial processing of that. <laughs> so it's not an overnight response. Yeah, yeah. It, it it actually took quite a bit of time. And then when we finally, when I finally got some inkling, hey, I think there's something here, talk about with the team, you know, a few other people kind of come up with some things that they want to look more specifically for. Uh, we went back and looked at it more closely. Are you real and cautious though, Jen? You go, well, this could be something. I don't want to get too excited. Yeah, you can't when you're talking about something this big. <laughs> uh, we've been looking for organic molecules on Mars since Viking landed in wow. 1976. Wow. Uh, so if you're going to make an announcement like this, you really need to be sure that you, the data says what you think it is. Wow. So uh, we went through a couple iterations of processing the data to make sure that it was what we think it was, make sure that um, the signals were actually repeatable. We found them in two different samples and we didn't find them in all the other samples that we had uh, looked at more carefully. So. Here, here, here you go. Here's uh, one of those examples. We've got thiophene. It's uh, four carbons there, and, a, and the yellow one is the sulfur. And that's a really important compound that we identified, and uh, because the sulfur in there is partly responsible for making those giant macro molecules, and we we find sulfur in organics all the time. So um, at least on Earth we do. So these. It, it, it took a long time. It wasn't like an instantaneous, oh my gosh, there's something here. It was, no, you're looking at the data, you're looking at the data, you're looking at the data. And it took for several months before I got that aha moment and I re realized that we were really on to something and uh, we just needed to be sure. So that's why it took three years to get this, this work out. So where do we go from here? I know Mars Insight is on its way and it's got some tools that let it dig way down. Is it gonna be able to help perhaps um, further the knowledge that, that uh, you reported this week? Is it, is it gonna help in that way? Well, Mars Insight is actually um, looking at the ge geology, uh, the, the dynamics of the planet itself. Are there Mars quakes? That's something that's going to explore. It wants to know, is the geology, um, is the rocks, are they, is, is the planet itself actually dynamic in at the current status? Is it actually doing things? Is it moving? You know, we have um, seismometers that we work with. Uh, we have different types of ground measurements that we do to try and understand some of that kind of stuff here on Earth. And uh, Insight is one of those first instruments, packages that's really going to try and understand what the uh, what the inside of the planet is doing. We haven't had a chance to really explore that before. But it's not gonna be yeah. able to do the level of analysis of the, of the material that you were able to do. No, uh, there is there are two other missions that are relevant. Uh, InSight is actually a very different type of mission, important in its own right, but a very different type of science. Uh, the missions that are really a follow-up to Curiosity rover are going to be the European Space Agency's ExoMars rover, and that one has a drill on it that goes two meters down. And that one's going to be exciting. <laughs> I really, really can't wait for results from that um, because uh, what's important about the Curiosity results that ExoMars is going to help resolve is the influence of the radiation environment at the surface. Now, we're familiar with radiation uh, a little bit from our own exposures and our own lives. However, on Mars, there's a significant amount of radiation, more than we can even mimic here on Earth, really. So uh, that radiation is generating free radicals all the time and really harsh chemicals we call oxidants. And all of that stuff can break down organic material and including the stuff that we actually found. So what we found in Curiosity Crater 
I'm sorry, what we found in the Gale Crater by curiosity is actually um, already been altered by that radiation mm -hmm. to some degree. Mm -hmm. And yet we still found it. And that was a surprise to a lot of people because it could have been destroyed by the radiation. But since we did find it there, it probably means that deeper down, there are other organics that are better preserved. And that's the type of stuff that ExoMars rover is gonna get to look at. There's also the NASA Mars 2020 rover that is going to go to probably a different type of environment. There you go. Different, there's, there, they, there's really cool looking rovers, I have to say. These it's things so are fun. Exciting, these <laughs> it's so exciting, it's so exciting. So the Mars 2020 rover has a, it looks kind of like Curiosity. Um, it has the same uh, rover body, but it has a completely different set of instruments on board. And um, it's going to be able to look at the sediments and the minerals and, and how organic material is inside that rock a little bit differently. And hopefully it will um, be able to pick out some samples to put in little tubes, leave on the ground. And some day later, we are going to, we're, we're planning on sending uh, a, a, a cache, a, 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 another real rover will go by and pick up those little caches and uh, send them home. And we're gonna get them back at earth. So that's, that's being planned right now. That, that hasn't happened yet, but it's being planned. The only Martian rocks we have on Earth right now are in the form of meteorites. So it might be kind of nice to have uh, rocks from yeah. Mars delivered to us, the ones that we chose. And then we could use our own analytical packages at home and in various labs around the world to look at those and, and see if there's actually any indications of life in those rocks. Um, so between the two uh, rovers, both of them have the potential of really shedding a lot of light on things. But I kind of think that the ExoMars rover, um, because of its deep drilling capacity, it's very unique. And uh, it might be able, it has an instrument on board that might actually detect signs of life. And uh, that's just gonna be really exciting. Wow. I think we should all be on our edge of our seats waiting for that one. What, when will that be? Well, it launches in 2020. Yeah. And so you figure it takes eight months, eight and a half months for it to get there. Um, it's gonna have um, about 120 days of its normal mission. So we're probably gonna see results in 2022. We'll call you that. That's my guess. <laughs> yeah, 21, 22. <laughs> you have an exciting job. I don't know when you originally created the title astrobiologist, you knew it'd be this exciting, but I think this is probably what you were hoping for. Oh, it, it, I have to say, I do love my job. Yeah. Um, and I'd love to uh, find other people who find get, are as excited about it as I am. <laughs> Jen uh, Eigenbrode is a... Uh, astrobiologist at the, I love it, at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. Thank you so much. I know this was, you've done more than three dozen interviews this week <laughs> on this uh, organic material, but um, we're so glad you could uh, take some time on a Saturday to talk to us. Well, Thank thanks you. for having me. Thanks, Jen. Thanks. Take care. Right.